The year is 1845. British military forces arrive at Maori Pa with overwhelming confidence. They have artillery that can level stone castles. They have disciplined infantry trained in European warfare. They have officers educated at the finest military academies. They're facing wooden fortifications built by people without engineering degrees or metal tools. The assault should be quick and decisive. Standard military doctrine says wooden fortifications can't withstand artillery. One bombardment, one infantry charge, and it's over. The British officers are so confident they're already planning victory celebrations. Then the assault begins, and everything goes wrong. Let me tell you about the Maori Pa system. Fortifications so brilliantly designed that they made European military doctrine obsolete. And why British forces with superior technology and training found themselves bleeding against wooden walls that shouldn't have stopped them. The British Empire had conquered a quarter of the world's land surface. Their military machine had crushed sophisticated armies from India to Africa. But in New Zealand, they ran into defensive architecture that their training hadn't prepared them for. When British officers first saw Maori Pa, they didn't recognise what they were looking at. These seemed like primitive wooden forts on hills. Nothing that European military science couldn't handle. That assumption killed a lot of soldiers. The PA system wasn't primitive. It was the result of centuries of military evolution. Maori tribes had been fighting each other long before Europeans arrived. Every battle taught lessons. Every defeat revealed weaknesses. Every victory showed what worked. The fortifications Europeans encountered in the 1840s were the final product of generations of combat testing and refinement. And they were brilliant. Start with the basic concept. European fortifications were designed to be impregnable, massive walls that couldn't be breached. Maori Pa were designed differently. They weren't trying to be unbreakable. They were designed to make assault so costly that attackers would give up, even if they could theoretically win. This is a fundamentally different approach to defense. European forts said, you can't get in. Maori Pa said, you can get in, but it will cost you more than it's worth. That psychological shift changed everything about how they were designed. The terrain selection was perfect. Pa were built on elevated positions with clear fields of fire in all directions. Attackers had to advance uphill while exposed to defensive fire. There were no covered approach routes, no dead ground where attacking forces could gather safely. Every meter of advance was under observation and under fire. But the real genius was in the layered defense system. A PL wasn't one wall. It was multiple defensive lines, each covering the others. If attackers breached the outer palisade, they found themselves trapped between defensive layers with defenders firing from multiple angles. Advancing became more dangerous than retreating. The palisades themselves were engineered more cleverly than Europeans realized. The spacing between posts was calculated precisely. Too close together, an artillery could knock down multiple posts at once. Too far apart, an infantry could slip through. Maori engineers had found the optimal spacing through trial and error. And here's where European expectations failed completely. When artillery hit those wooden palisades, the posts didn't just fall over. They shattered into sharp fragments that created additional obstacles. The debris made approach routes more dangerous, not less. British artillery was creating fortifications for the defenders. European officers kept waiting for the PA to weaken as it took damage. It didn't. Defenders adapted instantly to any breach, creating new firing positions and using the damaged structures as obstacles. The fortification remained functional, even with significant destruction, because it wasn't designed around structural perfection. It was designed around defensive capability. The terracing system created interlocking fields of fire that European military architects had never encountered. Defenders on different levels could cover each other perfectly. An attacker advancing on one terrace was exposed to fire from defenders on terraces above, below and beside them. There were no safe positions once you entered the kill zone. British military doctrine had solutions for fortifications. Artillery bombardment to create breaches. Infantry assault to exploit those breaches overwhelming force to push through any resistance. But those solutions assumed fortifications that became weaker with damage. Pa became more dangerous. The British learned this through catastrophic experience. At Ohioi in 1845, British forces with artillery and hundreds of trained soldiers assaulted a PA defended by a hundred Maori warriors. The bombardment created breaches as expected. 
The infantry assault entered those breaches as planned. The result was a slaughter. British forces suffered casualties at rates that would be considered disastrous in European warfare. The PA held, the assault failed, and British military officers had to write reports explaining how indigenous fortifications had defeated European military science. The pattern repeated across New Zealand. British forces with overwhelming advantages in technology, numbers and training found themselves unable to take well-defended PA without unacceptable casualties. Standard European military tactics simply didn't work. This forced a fundamental change in British strategy. New orders went out to commanders. Do not assault PA unless absolutely necessary. Use siege tactics, offer negotiation, bypass if possible. But direct assault against a well-designed PA defended by competent warriors was recognised as a losing proposition. Think about what this means. The most powerful military force in the Yibao Siemen world, with every technological and numerical advantage, officially recognised that they couldn't take indigenous wooden fortifications without prohibitive losses. That's not a minor tactical adjustment. That's an admission that European military doctrine had been defeated by indigenous engineering. The casualty ratios were devastating to British pride. When Maori warriors defended PA, attackers typically suffered five to ten times the casualties that defenders did. In European warfare, successful assaults accepted roughly equal casualties. The PA changed warfare mathematics completely. British officers studying a PA design found themselves acknowledging that indigenous military architecture exceeded European capabilities in several critical areas. PA solved problems European fortification hadn't addressed. How to build strong defences with limited resources and no metal tools. How to create fortifications that adapted to damage. How to make defensive positions economically sustainable. Some British officers proposed adopting PA design principles. The proposals were rejected, not because they were ineffective. Because admitting indigenous engineering was superior to European methods was politically impossible. But the evidence was undeniable. Maori Pa had made European conquest of New Zealand far more difficult and expensive than any reasonable military calculation suggested it should be. Individual PA might eventually fall through siege or negotiation, but the PA system as a whole proved effectively unbreakable through conventional assault. The insane fortress that never fell wasn't one specific Pa. It was the entire defensive system that made Maori territories unconquerable through standard European military tactics. The British had overwhelming force, superior technology and professional training. None of it was enough against fortifications designed through generations of actual combat experience. Today, military historians studying PA design recognise them as representing one of history's most sophisticated defensive systems. They combined engineering, psychology and tactical understanding in ways that European military science with all its advantages couldn't overcome. The Maori hadn't just built good fortifications, they'd solved fundamental problems of defensive warfare that European doctrine hadn't fully addressed. How to defend against artillery with wooden construction. How to create defences that improved with damage rather than degraded. How to use terrain as the primary defensive element. How to make conquest economically unsustainable, even for wealthy empires. These weren't theoretical solutions. They were proven in combat against the most powerful military force in the world. And they worked. Not perfectly. Some PA fell to siege or negotiation. But well enough that British conquest of New Zealand took decades longer than military planning suggested it should. The fortress that never fell proved something crucial about military. Engineering. Sophistication isn't about advanced materials or complex mathematics. It's about understanding fundamental principles and applying them brilliantly to available resources. The Maori did this better than the Europeans. The casualty lists don't lie. European technology eventually made traditional PA obsolete. But that took decades and required completely changing how the British approached warfare in New Zealand. The PA didn't have to win forever, they just had to win long enough to prove that indigenous military engineering could defeat European military science. That's what makes the story insane. Not that wooden fortifications existed, but that they worked so effectively against forces that should have made them irrelevant. The British Empire that conquered a quarter of the world found itself stopped by wooden walls on New Zealand hilltops. And the reason was simple. The Maori had spent generations perfecting defensive warfare through actual combat. The British had spent generations perfecting offensive warfare 
against European-style fortifications. When those two systems met, the defensive system won. Sometimes the most advanced military technology isn't the newest weapons or largest armies. Sometimes it's understanding warfare so deeply that you can defeat superior forces through better design. The Maori proved it. The British learned it the hard way. And the PA that never fell became legend because it represented a truth empires prefer to ignore. Indigenous engineering can exceed imperial technology when it's refined through necessity and tested through generations of real combat. That's not primitive warfare. That's military sophistication that European doctrine couldn't match. The British Empire conquered territories worldwide using overwhelming force and technological superiority. In New Zealand, those advantages meant less than the Maori understanding of defensive fundamentals. Wooden posts defeated steel cannons not through strength, but through design intelligence. Military academies teach future officers about famous fortifications, the Maginot Line, Vauban's designs, medieval castles, they should teach about Maori Pa. Because the Pa system solved problems of asymmetric defense that modern military forces still struggle with. How do you defend against superior force using limited resources? The Maori answered that question definitively. The insane fortress that never fell stands as proof that sophistication in warfare isn't about who has the best weapons or the most soldiers. It's about who understands the fundamental principles of combat more deeply. And sometimes the people without military academies or engineering degrees understand those principles better than empires with all their resources. The Maori Pa proved it beyond doubt.